This video is sponsored by World Anvil. It's time you transfer the incredible worlds you've created from notebooks and scattered graph paper onto World Anvil for everyone to see. Take the monsters, NPCs, locations, the thousands of years of lore you've painstakingly created and transform them into articles. Organize, associate, and create using the intuitive systems that make World Anvil the best world building tool. I'm using World Anvil to build my game world. Seriously, you should be too. Click our link in the description below and start building your world. And now what you're here for. One quick word about our sponsor World Anvil. Use World Anvil as a DM tool as well. Keep track of your player's characters, stats, gear, backgrounds, anything and everything with the digital DM screen. Upload that commissioned art for your players or NPCs. Give your NPCs the identity they deserve. Need ideas for your own homebrew world? Check out the incredible examples that people have made in the world section. I love the new prompt system. Get inspired by how other people answer unique world-building prompts and incorporate them into your world, or write your own. If you're a creator, writer, map maker, portrait artist, or fan of tabletop RPGs in general, you need to check out World Anvil. It's incredible. Click our link in the description below and build your world and share what you make with us. When my players gambled and got themselves killed cause it was getting boring. A few friends and I were running a modified homebrew campaign loosely based on the rules of the Dark Eye and the setting of the game FTL Faster Than Light. Essentially, they were all part of the crew of a small starship, with everyone choosing their race, class, and position on the crew. Pilot, Engineer, Shields Guy, Weapons Guy. The only part I wholly stole from FTL was that every part of the ship could be damaged individually, so an enemy vessel could specifically cause damage to the weapons systems, which would then need skills, repair kits, scrap, etc. to fix. I hooked the party with a little mystery about strange alien monoliths being found on a few planets across the galaxy and causing people to go crazy, and off they went. I was the DM for the campaign and probably could have been a little more heavy-handed, but I didn't want to risk breaking the group's fun at the time. The first few sessions went really well, and everyone found their groove. We're all sci-fi nerds, so they all had fun making callouts like in Star Trek, and role-playing the bridge dialogue. The ship got upgraded. They installed new, more powerful weapons and such, and made a lot of progress on the main story. They were in the midst of defending a mining outpost which had found one of the monoliths from a small squad of mercenaries, when a few bad rolls and an unintended combo in the enemy composition, basically the mercs had two fighters, which have very high evasion, and the player's ship didn't have any point defense, and was mostly focused on taking out larger vessels caused them to take way too much damage to carry on. So they landed at the mining outpost, the engineer got to repairing the ship's damage, two crew members got out to explore, and the last went to pick up their reward from the outpost's administration. That last one is the problem player Vic. I hadn't had any real problems with him, but he was very invested in roleplay, and his character was more on the edgy side. He was a veteran in the fleet, and our weapons guy, and to cut him some slack, pretty good at sussing out the weaknesses of the enemy builds I'd thrown at them. But he was also very much an it's what my character would do kind of guy. So he went to pick up the reward, which included a clue for the campaign, a video log showing the thieves of the monolith flying away, alongside their ship registration, and was returning when he suddenly sidetracked and asked me if there was a black market of some kind here. I said sure because there was, and let him find a small roadhouse slash tavern run by a cousin's uncle's nephew's branch family of a larger pirate clan. The place was tiny, just a bit of drug trade, a gambling ring and some contraband, so I thought he was just being a bit edgy by mingling with smugglers and pirates and let him. The other players did their thing, bought a souvenir and rejoined the engineer to continue patching up the ship, but Vic was now full on gambling in a den of inequity. The others had no idea where he was, and his roles were very bad with disadvantage because the people he was with were cheats, obviously, so they spent a while trying to find where he was. He first lost the reward, then his character's money, and all the while I was hinting at the guys he was with not being honest, but he just kept going. Eventually the crew did find him, but he just bet their ship in a game of cards, and if they tried to intervene they'd probably get gunned down by the entire pub. He lost, of course, and the ship was gone. I should have probably put an end to it there, because the mood at the table was getting sour, but I improvised a Grand Theft spaceship quest about stealing back their vessel and getting out of there. Night falls, the crew sneaks into the spaceport undetected, and is just about to board in secret, when he says, I pull out my pistol and shoot the guard in the head. I was unironically baffled at WTF he was doing, like is he trying to get everyone killed? 
Sure enough, the shot misses, and instantly the whole port's guard is shooting at the crew trying to be sneaky. They take some hits and eventually get cornered in the engine room, where Vic deliberately shoots at the reactor core and causes the entire ship to explode, killing the whole party and destroying the spaceport, effectively ending the campaign. The whole party is left fuming, except for Vic who just goes, finally, now we can do something else. Turns out he was bored of the game's setting and decided to ruin it for everyone else for his own entertainment. I kicked him out after that, but we were all out of energy by that point. I offered the party to roll back from the last session and ditch Vic from the group, but they all declined because they felt it was ruined. This was maybe a month ago and I'm still salty about it. Everyone seemed to have fun with it. The whole party got super into the RP aspect of space travel. I had a whole story planned out and everything, and then one guy had to go and ruin it. That's one dumb way to end a game. Here's another much better way to end a game. Rocks fall and everyone dies. How my DM subverted the worst way to end a story. This was the moment that made me want to become a DM, and eventually led me to writing two source books and getting more involved in D&D. For context, my group had just completed an insane emotional campaign of Curse of Strahd. During the climactic final battle, my character was killed, and their soul claimed by the Dark Powers. Everyone else still loved their powerful level 10 characters, so we decided to continue the campaign outside Barovia and in a homebrew setting. My new character Melody's song was a gunslinger slash bard with a penchant for drama, quoting Shakespeare and some kick-ass cowboy flair. She had taken a new name after her squad was killed, and she deserted the army. After defeating Strahd, the party was feeling confident they could take up a position as investigators into dark powers, eldritch gods, and lost forgotten things of an ancient world. In part to learn how to free my previous character's soul, Melody's song joined up with them to explore an ancient ruin from an advanced civilization, known as the Grave of Gods. We descended hundreds of feet into a dark cavern and were swarmed by horrible mutated monsters twisted by radioactive and necrotic energy. The combat was tense, and even with powerful magic items and my super high DPS, we quickly realized we weren't in Barovia anymore. This was another beast entirely. When the combat was over, we were standing before the entrance to the God Grave, above which were the words, All the World's a Stage. Odd, but eager for treasure and challenges, the party descended into the Grave of Gods. Our DM is a master of eldritch horror. We faced rooms filled with massive centipedes with human faces, gibbering horrors, black puddings, and dark curses. But what terrified us more than anything was the feeling that we were being watched. Even with super high perception checks, we could not figure out what was following us. During a watch, one of the players heard something that sounded like clapping. Since I had the best stealth, expertise in 20 decks, I believed I could discover what it was without getting caught. I turned a corner and saw a shadowy figure, but then the DM told me to make a wisdom saving throw. I roll a 15. My DM said nothing seemed to happen, and I snuck back to the party and reported my findings. After our long rest, we continued exploring. We spent two hours IRL going through more rooms of this radioactive horror chamber, but eventually found ourselves in an observation deck overlooking the corpse of a god. We learned a bunch of lore investigating, including that the ancient civilization had somehow trapped a god and used it to power everything. But then in the middle of exploring this room, the monk pulled a lever. DM played a 2000 sitcom laugh track and then said, rocks fall and everyone dies, and promptly declared a 10 minute break. We freaked out, the players were super invested in these badass, strahd-killing characters, but our DM just smiled and went to the bathroom. When he returned, he said that we woke up in exactly the same spot we finished our long rest. The party decided this was some kind of temporal trap, and we'll go a different route. After another hour IRL, we found our way back to the observation deck. My characters got some mechanical knowledge, so I decided to investigate the machinery in the room, specifically the lever. I roll a 25 Tinker's Tools to detach a panel. The DM smiled, played the laugh track and said rocks fall and everyone dies. At this point we're starting to get frustrated. We spent another 45 minutes in real life getting back to the observation room. One of the party members suggested we blow the glass and go look at the corpse. I take a shot, laugh track plays and our DM says rocks fall and everyone dies. We're fuming. Clearly this is some kind of puzzle we just can't figure out. We spend a bit brainstorming. Theories get tossed around and we make our way back to the room. At this point it's been about 6 hours in real life. My character believes the lever is super important, because all this started after it was pulled. So I decided to look in the connecting machinery for a wire, gears, anything that connects to the lever. I roll really high on my investigation, and the DM tells me that nothing connects to the lever because nothing connects to anything. There's nothing inside these shattered computers. No magic, no wires, no ancient tech sources. Electricity. And suddenly it hits me, the quote above the entrance, 
the laugh track, the tech that never could have worked. I shoot out of my seat and tell the DM my character walks right up to the lever, and I begin favorite Shakespeare monologue from memory. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day, to the last syllable of recorded time, and all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury signifying nothing. I take a deep breath and say, Cue Sergeant Miranda Draper, my character's real name. Pulls the lever, rocks fall and everyone dies. The company bows and exits stage right, and then I pull the lever. My party freaks out. They think I'm being ridiculous and we're going to have to repeat this all over again. The DM looks at me, smiles, and plays a cheering soundtrack, and then says rocks fall and everyone dies. The table erupts, but the DM calms everyone and says, When you awake you find yourself standing in the observation deck, but you realize it's just a stage. Hundreds of faceless people fill the auditorium, wearing lab coats, hard hats, and suits. All you can see are their bright white teeth as they cheer. You all bow, the cheering stops, and a spotlight shines on a single figure in a stage box. He wears a bright yellow suit and a perfectly smooth white mask. The figure slowly claps and you all exit stage right. You all wake up standing at the entrance to the grave of gods. The words, all the world's a stage, displayed above sealed blast doors. It was all an illusion, the exploration a trick. It wasn't until we realized we were actors and took control of our narrative that we could change the story and avoid our grisly fate. It was an incredibly empowering and amazing moment. It left us with mystery. Was any of the lore we learned real? Was it actually possible to trap a god? Or was it all a trick, part of the sick play we repeated over and over? It was an incredibly satisfying conclusion to the exploration arc, forced my character to reveal her true name and therefore bond with the party and revealed our new eldritch evil. This arc made me know I wanted to be a DM and led me to making D&D content. I don't understand a player that isn't having a good time and wanting to sabotage the game for the rest of the players. Just quit. Have you ever tried a time loop mechanic in a game? How'd it go? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel All Things D&D. Stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.